Hi, second graders. Thank you guys so much for letting me be a part of your learning this week. My name is Miss Curry, and I'm really excited for us to keep working on determining important ideas in opinion articles today. Before we get started, just like our last two lessons, make sure that you have a partner or someone that you can share with during our discussions today. Your partner could be someone like a family member who's in your house, it could be a pet, it could even be a favorite stuffy or a toy. Also, if you have your literacy extension packet for this week, or if you have your making meaning book, go ahead and grab that now so that you can follow along with the articles as we read. We'll be reading the same articles we've looked at earlier this week. I'll give you a second to go grab those things. Make sure that you have them before we get started. We have a couple of different goals today. Our first goal is I can hear and discuss an opinion article. Our second goal is I can explore important ideas in an opinion article. Our third one is I can describe how reasons support important ideas. Today, a new goal is I can compare two articles and I can write a journal entry and determine important ideas. This week we heard two different articles about the same topic, but that had different opinions. Today we're gonna to hear both of those articles again. After we hear them again, we're gonna compare them and discuss important ideas with our partners. So the first article that we read was called Zoos are good for animals. What do you remember about this article? Turn and tell your partner. Awesome job sharing with your partner. What was the author's opinion about zoos? Turn and talk to your partner again. I bet a lot of you guys are saying that the author's opinion was that they like zoos or that zoos are a happy place for animals to live. Whatever you shared, great job and thank you for sharing that with your partner. We also read an article this week called Zoos Are Not Good for Animals. What do you remember about this article? Turn and tell your partner. What was the author's opinion about zoos in this article? Turn and tell your partner. I bet a lot of you guys are saying that the author's opinion in this article is that zoos are a bad place and that they don't do good things for animals. Whatever you shared, awesome job. Thank you guys for sharing. So today we're gonna reread both of these articles. We're gonna read zoos are good for animals first. While we reread this article, if you have it in front of you, I want you to be highlighting or underlining the opinion and the reasons that support that opinion. After we read it through one time, we'll go back through and I'll highlight what I think are the opinion and the reasons. So first reading, you'll be underlining or highlighting the opinion and reasons. Second reading, I'll do some of that too. You might get the same thing I did. You might have different ideas. Both things are fine. If you don't have the article in front of you, that's okay. You can follow along on the screen and just pretend that you're highlighting or imagine what you would highlight or underline if you had the paper in front of you. So looking at the beginning, zoos are good for animals. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Just about everyone enjoys a trip to the zoo. But are zoos good for animals? Many people think that they are. One way that zoos help animals is by caring for them and treating animals that are sick. For example, the Wildlife Health Center at the Bronx Zoo in New York provides care for more than 15,000 animals. The zookeepers at the Bronx Zoo also work with animals to keep their minds and their bodies healthy. For example, 
The zookeepers use toys and games to help tigers develop their natural instincts, such as the instincts needed for hunting. Zoos protect animals too. Animals in zoos are safe from hunters. Zoos are also safe places for animals whose habitats are being threatened. By protecting animals, zoos help endangered species survive. In the last 30 years, zoos working with other conservation groups have helped save black-footed ferrets, California condors, red wolves, and other endangered species. Zoos are also places where scientists can study animals. Zoos often share information with other zoos and scientists, which helps everyone learn more about the animals. The more we understand our animal friends, the more we can help protect them. The next time you visit the zoo, say thanks to the zookeepers for making life better for the animals that live there. All right, I hope that you guys were underlining the opinion and the reasons as you were reading. Awesome job. Let's read it again. This time I'm going to be highlighting what I think the opinion and the reasons are as we read. You might have underlined and that's okay too. So right away I see the title, Zoos are good for animals. I think that this is the author's opinion and they put it right in the title. Authors don't always put their opinion in the title, but this time I think the author did. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight Zoos are good for animals. Let's see if we can find reasons in the rest of the article. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, just about everyone enjoys a trip to the zoo, but are zoos good for animals? Many people think that they are. Hmm, do we see any reasons in that paragraph? I didn't notice any, I'm gonna keep reading. One way that zoos help animals is by caring for them and treating animals that are sick. For example, the Wildlife Health Center at the Bronx Zoo in New York provides care for more than 15,000 animals. The zookeepers at the Bronx Zoo also work with animals to keep their minds and bodies healthy. For example, the zookeepers use toys and games to help tigers develop their natural instincts, such as the instincts needed for hunting. Hmm, what reasons did you guys notice in that paragraph? What reasons help support the idea that zoos are good for animals? I noticed that right away the author says that zoos help animals by caring for them and treating animals that are sick. That's a reason that tells me that it's a healthy place for animals. It keeps them um, it cares for them and keeps them healthy by treating the ones that are sick. That's a reason that supports the idea that zoos are good for animals. I wonder if there's any other reasons in this paragraph. I also notice that it says that they work with animals to keep their minds and bodies healthy. That's another reason that tells me that zoos are helping the animals because they're keeping them healthy. Those are two reasons I noticed. Did you notice the same ones? Let's keep reading and see what else we find. Zoos protect animals too. Animals in zoos are safe from hunters. Zoos are also safe places for animals whose habitats are being threatened. By protecting animals, zoos help endangered species survive. In the last 30 years, zoos working with other conservation groups have helped save black-footed ferrets, California condors, red wolves, and other endangered species. What reasons did you notice in that paragraph? I noticed that the author said that zoos protect animals. The author probably thinks that a reason that zoos are good is because they keep animals safe. They protect them. I also noticed that the author said that zoos help endangered species survive. By helping endangered species, zoos are good for animals. 
I noticed those two reasons in that paragraph. Did you guys notice any other reasons? Awesome job highlighting and underlining. Let's finish reading the article. Zoos are also places where scientists can study animals. Zoos often share information with other zoos and scientists, which helps everyone learn more about the animals. The more we understand our animal friends, the more we can help protect them. The next time you visit the zoo, say thanks to the zookeepers for making life better for the animals that live there. Did you notice any other reasons in the part I just read? I bet that you did. I noticed that the author says that zoos um, are places where we can study animals and everyone can learn more about the animals. So, zoos help everyone learn more about the animals. That's another reason that supports the idea that zoos are good for animals. I wonder if you guys found all the same reasons I found or if you even found different reasons. Awesome job. Let's look at our second article. Zoos are not good for animals. Just like last time, I'm going to read it two times. The first time, we're just going to be listening. You guys might be underlining on your own papers or imagining what you would be underlining. I'm going to be reading it, and on the second reading, I will also underline both the opinion and the reasons. So you're looking for opinion and reasons to underline as we read. Okay, make sure you're following along. Zoos are not good for animals. Imagine that you are visiting a zoo. You notice a lion in its cage pacing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The lion seems restless and unhappy, and it probably is. Experts say that when a lion, tiger, or other animal paces in its cage like that, it often means that the animal is bored or upset. Does that make you feel bad? If so, you're not alone. Many people believe that keeping animals in zoos is cruel and unnatural. For one thing, some of the enclosures in zoos are much too small for the animals. Many zoos try to make their enclosures look like the animals' natural habitats. But just because it looks right to us does not mean it's good for the animals. Take elephants, for example. In the wild, elephants walk as much as 30 miles every day looking for food and stopping at watering holes. Not even the best zoos can build enclosures large enough for elephants to live as they do in their natural habitat. In the wild, animals learn how to survive when they are very young. For example, a young leopard learns how and where to hunt by watching its mother. When they are raised in zoos, leopards and other young animals never learn these and other important skills. They do not have to because humans feed and protect them. This is not a good thing. Most animals raised in zoos can never go back to their natural homes. Some people say that zoos teach people about animals. Others argue that we do not have to put animals in cages to learn about them and that they belong in their natural habitat. Awesome job rereading that article with me, you guys. Let's see if we can find the opinion and reasons that support that opinion in this article. So right away looking at the title, I notice the author is telling me their opinion. Their opinion is that zoos are not good for animals. I'm gonna be checking the rest of the article to see what reasons support that idea that zoos are not good for animals. Let's read and look for some of those reasons. Imagine that you are visiting a zoo. You notice a lion in its cage pacing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The lion seems restless and unhappy, and it probably is. Experts say that when a lion, tiger, or other animal paces in its cage like that, it often means that the animal is bored or upset. Does that make you feel bad? If so, you are not alone. Let's think about that paragraph. Did you notice any reasons there? What reasons did you notice? I noticed that right away, the author says that 
it probably is upset or restless. Experts say that when a lion, tiger, or other animal paces like that, it means the animal is bored or upset. That tells me right away that a reason that zoos are not good for animals is that when they're in cages, they might pace. And that makes, or that means that they're bored or upset. Did you underline that too? Let's keep reading and see what other reasons we can find. Many people believe that keeping animals in zoos is cruel and unnatural. For one thing, some of the enclosures in zoos are much too small for the animals. Many zoos try to make their enclosures like, look like the animals' natural habitats. But just because it looks right to us does not mean it is good for the animals. Take elephants, for example. In the wild, elephants walk as much as 30 miles every day, looking for food and stopping at watering holes. Not even the best zoos can build enclosures large enough for elephants to live as they do in their natural habitat. What reasons did you notice in that paragraph? I noticed that the author said that some of the enclosures are much too small for the animals. Enclosures being too small and uncomfortable for the animals would be a reason that zoos are not a good place for them. Did you notice any other reasons? Did you underline the same thing? Remember, reasons are things that support the author's opinion. Let's keep reading and see what else we can find. In the wild, animals learn how to survive when they are very young. For example, a young leopard learns how and where to hunt by watching its mother. When they are raised in zoos, leopards and other young animals never learn these or other important skills. They do not have to because humans feed and protect them. This is not a good thing. Most animals raised in zoos can never go back to their natural homes. What about in that paragraph? Did you notice any reasons? I noticed that the author told us that when animals like leopards are raised in zoos, they never learn important skills. That seems like a reason that zoos would not be a good or healthy place for animals if they're not learning the skills that they normally would in the wild. Did you notice any other reasons in this part? I heard the author also say that animals raised in zoos can never go back to their natural homes. That might be considered a bad thing too if animals can't go back to the place that they're meant to live. Did you underline or highlight the same things in your article? I'm curious to know if you guys found some different reasons too. Let's finish it. Some people say that zoos teach people about animals. Others argue that we do not have to put animals in cages to learn about them and that they belong in their natural habitat. Did you notice any new reasons in that article? Some of you might have underlined that they belong in their natural habitat. Animals should be in the place that they're meant to be. Those are some reasons that the author might give for why zoos are not good for animals. Awesome job, you guys, on reading and underlining and looking for important ideas that support the opinion. So, which article did you agree with today? Go ahead and tell your partner. What did the author say that persuaded you or made you agree with them? Tell your partner. There's probably tons of different ideas about which one you agree with and what the author did to persuade you. I bet there are all different reasons for all different people. One example of something someone might say is, I agree, with zoo I agree with zoos are not good for animals. The author persuaded me when he or she said that some enclosures are too small for the animals. So, how did you do with giving reasons for your thinking today? 
If you did a great job, you can give yourself a thumbs up. If you're like, I did okay, you can give yourself a thumbs to the side. And if you're like, I could do a lot better than that, give yourself a thumb down. Awesome job monitoring, monitoring your own work today and thinking about how you did. All right, something that you guys are going to be working on after this video is a journal entry about your reading. You could do your journal entry about any book or article that you want. I'll show you my example. When you do yours, make sure you include the title and the author's name, what the text is about, which is the topic, an idea in the text that you think is important to remember, and why you think it is important to remember that idea. I'll show you my example. You can either do yours on um, the page in your extension packet, or you can just use a piece of writing paper like I did. I wrote, today I read zoos are good for animals. This article is about why zoos are, good, are a good place for animals to live. An important idea is that zoos can teach people about animals. This idea is important because the more we know about animals, the more we can protect them. Your writing might look different than this. You might write about something other than the articles that we read today, or you might write about the articles that we read today. I encourage you to read lots of different books about lots of different topics and try writing about them. Second graders, this week, make sure that you are practicing reading both fiction and nonfiction books. Use the thinking about my reading chart to monitor your own reading. Select just right books and think about what you are reading. What is it about? What do you wonder? What have you learned? What are you visualizing? Think deeply about everything that you read and try to read for 20 minutes each day. Remember that you can go online to the Seattle Public Schools website, select student and family portals and click on academic tools. On this page, you'll be able to find things like kids reads, Tumble Book, and Pebble Go if you need more reading materials. You can also look up Scholastic Learn at Home and ReadWorks to find more fun things to read. Second graders, thank you so much for letting me be a part of your learning this week. I know that you are all growing as readers and working hard every day. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and keep working hard.